Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit Specials is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit Special number 169, recorded September 4th, 2013. The new TriCasters are here! The new TriCasters are here! Leo Laporte here, and I've got a panel, a roundtable of really great people. I want to say hi to uh, Tim Jennison. Tim and I just uh, finished a great triangulation episode. Highly recommend you watch it, in which we learned all about Tim. But I didn't learn everything because I found out not only are you a ham, a painter, uh, uh, the creator of New Tech, founder of New Tech, but you're also a pipe organ enthusiast. Yes. I didn't know that about you. <laughs> I don't recommend it as a hobby. It brings a lot of square feet. Uh, no, you're, you have the most patient family I've ever heard of. I'm That's true. Say that. did, they say, did they tell you the same <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I want to thank you, Tim, for being here and for bringing the uh, staff, Andrew Cross, the CEO of uh, New Tech. CTO, pardon me, of New Tech uh, is here. And uh, Don, of course, Don Mellons, who always does all the, the training and the demoing of stuff. Um, what are we going to see today? What is new? So what we're what we're going to show you today is we've got we're basically announcing a full new line of pro tri casters. So that goes, so these are not for amateurs like me. <laughs> yeah. This is for NBC, CBS, ESPN. No, not at all. That absolutely for people just like you. And in fact, <laughs> you, you you're the inspiration that drives exactly oh, this kind of thing. Okay. So, um, but but you know we're, we're actually introducing you know we we we're, we're expanding the whole line. So we're basically now we're starting a, a, with a full four M E row switcher. At under ten thousand dollars, which is really something quite quite ground under ground ten. Under ten. Yes. So we're using an eight hundred and fifty extreme right now, That's correct? Which is a, I think twenty five thousand yeah. dollar switcher. You're you're going to be able to get that kind of capability under ten. Well, actually, uh, uh, this will blow that away. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so, hey, I'm, so. sure, I'm sure you can. I hate it. innovation. That's <laughs> <laughs> so what happens, though, isn't it? It does. It um, does. But for under ten, I mean, you have full four M Euro switcher that's got all this amazing new stuff, and Don's going to show you in a second. And then, you know, stepping out from there, there's the new 460, which is um, does everything the 410 does and even more. Then, uh, stepping up from there, there's the 860 which is, you know, is the eight input version of those that does even more. And then there's the 8000, which you mentioned a bit earlier, which is our flagship product. Right. And um, that's not a new model, but we're actually bringing out a full new kind of feature upgrade for that that's free for all of our customers. So that's what, one of the things that's interesting, and that's what Tim was talking about, is that you, you basically basing these on PC hardware, on commodity hardware. Yeah. Uh, in this case, it's Windows 7 you're running on? It, it's Windows 7 embedded, but... It, it, the, there's way more. I, I know way too much about how these work. To the, the, it's not just commodity this hardware. Isn't, this there isn't is, a Dell that you put off the shelf and put your not, software no, on. I mean, there's a lot of hardware. Yeah, we, we do our own hardware development. Yeah. Um, you know, we, which is really with an eye to the, the things that we need. So we're right. not just commodity pieces put in there. We do our own development so that we can get low latency and can get very high bandwidth and throughput through the system. And then you know we tweak these things like crazy. And we've just got the. You know, these brilliant engineers who know how to, they, you know, look into help, the timing of device drivers and kernel right. calls and things like this to help make it really get real time and be able to funnel video through these computers in a way that's just unbelievable. We've come a long way from a frame grabber on a, a 6800, haven't we? <laughs> or 68000. Um, all right, well, uh, let's let's take a look. Where did, Don, what are you going to show us uh, first? We have a green screen set up so we can show you some virtual sets. Um, we're, gonna, we're shooting this with our 850. So uh, you're seeing the output of the 850. You are. You're also going to be able to see the new interface of the 460. This looks beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. I, I didn't have anything to do with it, but yeah. thank you anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it is. It is beautiful, and it's very easy to use. And as a TriCaster user for many years, I've already fallen in love with it. Well, it's one of the things, and I have to be honest, when I go to NAB or I go to CES and I see the beautiful TriCaster booth. I always look at people like you, Don, and you got Kiki Stockhammer up there, and you're going, bruh, 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 and I go, I can never do all of that. You guys make it look very easy. But I guess with the right hardware and software combinations and people, we, we've actually taken people who have no training in this at all mm -hmm. 
In fact, that's pretty much all of you, right, John? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and they have become masters of the TriCaster. So Absolutely. I know you can do it. I, I see it over and over again. And, you know, Kiki's a great example. She is an amazing presenter, and she's been doing this a long time. But she's not a video producer. No, right. She's not somebody that runs a TV show at any point in time. And for her to be able to get up and run it as Walsh easily. Is, Walsh is being a host. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly right. So right. it is really that easy to use. So uh, you're sitting in front of your new switcher board. Has this changed from the one that we're this, using? This has not changed. It's just literally the uh, features inside of the interface. The interface itself has done some changes. Has changed. And, and what I want to preface here is the things that I'm going to show you here are across the professional line. They're going to be available in the 410, the 460, the 860, and the 8000. Um, the first three that I mentioned are new TriCasters. The 8000 is actually a free upgrade. So anybody who has an 8000 is going to be able to get this capability right. at no That's charge. Right. Okay. Be able to download the upgrade. So as Andrew said, the first thing point that I want to make is we have true 4 and 8 ME switchers. So our switcher You better explain this. What is an ME? Well, an ME is stands for mix effects bus. Okay. And what it allows you to do is two things. It either allows you to use it as a mixer so you could come over here and say, I want this to be a mixer, and now it looks just like the production mixer underneath it. What does that mean? I'm mixing two different signals, I'm going from one camera to the other? Yes, and very... One effect to the other? Very often, you may be doing a production, and you may want to have a secondary production that doesn't have all the elements of the first production. Okay. So this is a way to be able to actually produce two shows from one tri -caster. Each one in its own bus. That's right. Now, there's also multiple outputs. So you could have two different... MEs coming out of two different outputs and literally produce two shows at the same time. So who would use this? Somebody doing uh, uh, college basketball might want to do one version for air, one version for alums, something like that? It's or? possible, or a lot of times when we deal with TriCaster, we deal with second screen production. So you've got the main production oh, happening, and now I've got the PowerPoint, the roll-in videos, ah. all the other things that we want to see so, during that So production. your audience might have a, uh, an iPad that's watching one stream, while on the video screen they're watching another, That could be like done, that. and, and wow. or, you, or you could just have two screens, and right. you, could, you could have the PowerPoint on one and the presentation oh, cool. happening on the okay. other. So on and so forth. So, and you have four and eight of them. Now, this allows you to do a lot of stuff. One of the things about MEs that people always want to be able to see is they say, I, I want to have an output for my MEs because I want to be able to preview them all at the same time so right. that I can see it before I go to it. And the TriCaster includes... Uh, is there a way we can... Are we going to be able to see this directly or how are we going to see this? Because I want to get a closer shot if we can of the interface. The interface is gorgeous. The TriCaster includes these... Uh, Multi-viewers. No, that will other, allow us to other see. Screen, other screen. I'm going to turn this back into its effect. So we're seeing the second screen. There's the, there we go. Greg's got it. All right. This, and is, this is, by the way, what I see, or something like it, when I'm in my office. Nothing so polished. This is the new one. And now here you can see all four of the MEs. And on an 860 or an 8000, you'd be able to see all eight of your MEs live. So you know exactly what you're switching to, even if it's a virtual environment. You don't even have to bring it to preview in order to see it. Uh, you can see it all happening in real time right on the multi-viewer. So this, the second screen, which is the multi-viewer, John, or Greg, yeah. So this is our preview. This can be a preview, but it's also adjustable, and we can make it program out. We can make it uh, We should just sell Burke walk through, this, walk through a set that does not exist. I want to point out, Vermeer had nothing on this. All right. <laughs> we can make it a full multi-viewer. <laughs> To see all the inputs and outputs, however okay. you want to set it up. Got it. Nice. All right, so one of the biggest in advancements in the switcher that I love is very simple. And right. I, I can't believe that we didn't put it in before this. And a lot of our devices in here have presets. So whenever you go to a media player, for instance, you've got presets. And you can instantly change out what's happening in any of those. I can go to a new preset. It's like a new playlist, basically. Right. Well, we've, we've been using those a lot lately. They've been training me on how to use them. Well, you're, <laughs> your guys are going to love this because you can now do that in the switcher. Because we do that a lot. We'll set up lower thirds, or we'll set up graphics and things, and that can all be done like this instantly, yeah. And when you do it in the switcher, what's nice is not only, you know, you see all the transitions here instantly changing out, not only can, oh, I, ch can yeah. I change out all the transitions, but notice the DSKs. The positioners are turning on and off, the transitions in the DSKs are changing, the sources in the DSKs are changing. So it literally is like adding 10 more DSKs because you can, you can instantly change them out. And all of this is also controllable by our macro system. We have recordable macros, so you can just select presets as part of a macro and change out the entire configuration of the switcher. That's handy because obviously, uh one of the advantages of this is that your director is the same person as your technical director, the person who's thinking about shots 
is also doing it. That's how we do it. We have one guy doing ba basically the job of 20 people. So having macros can really simplify the, the job. You set that up ahead of time and you don't have to think so hard. Yep, and we'll get into macros a little bit more in a moment. I do want to start talking about our enhanced virtual sets. Now that's the other thing you do in an ME. An ME can be used as a mixer for those submixes okay. like we were talking yep. about. Or you can u choose to use it as an effect. An effect is one of our virtual effects. So it could be an effects bus, just an effect. Exactly. Yeah. It's just an okay. effects bus, allowing me to do That's either it. a virtual set or a double box effect or Got triple it. box effect or whatever you might want to do. So we do have uh, some enhanced virtual sets in this new version and these new TriCasters. Um, we've added a few new ones. We've inc increased the uh, quality of them. And we actually have a green screen set up over there. We and do. What I would like you to do. You want me to go over I there? I would like you to go over there. Oh, boy. And stand in the green screen. All right. So I, I, it doesn't look like there's anything going on over there. It just looks like a, a big old green screen. You'll, you'll see it when I get over in front of it. Um, look at that. Wait a minute. That's not green. No, it's not. <laughs> How did I get in here? <laughs> That's so great. we can literally from almost anywhere I'm put a you short. <laughs> almost anywhere. Well, that's okay because we can have you complete me? we have complete control, Leo. Okay. Yes, I can shrink you. Oh my god, I'm getting I can make oh. you minute. I can even uh, take Perfect. you down if you'd like to go down in the elevator, we can go downstairs. <laughs> that's fine, whatever you want to do. So Can you, you just show the shot without the special effect just so people know that I am not standing at our new new studio here that this is that's the shot and there, this is green but it's keyed out yes right? yeah yeah so I'm just standing here like some nitwit so here <laughs> that's your shot right there. there just like that all right and but when you, so now you mix in the effects bus the ME and this this is the set I'm at I love this this is great so there's a lot of different uh, sets that we have that come with the TriCaster, a lot of different effects that are available. Uh, we have this what is we probably call, designed in Lightwave, isn't it, Tim? Yeah, they are designed yeah, in Lightwave. We have look, I turn into Kiki. Close-up shots. <laughs> you look a little better there, Leo. Uh, uh, I gotta say, I like that yeah, shot better. Yeah, yeah, that's better. Uh -huh. <laughs> These full standing shots like this, um, double box, triple box, quad box effects, all that stuff. Well, that's nice. We haven't been able to do that in the past. We've wanted to have more boxes. That's good. But you know. We wanted to take it up a notch, and we've done that with our virtual sets by adding a new type of virtual set that you've never heard of before. What's this that? This is a holographic virtual set. Is Jessica Yellen from C CNN going to join me? <laughs> so what this allows you to do is I'm going to play a little video here and show yes. you what this actually does. Oh, dear, I'm scared. Okay. So it allows you to take a panoramic picture, yes. like you see right there, yes. and you can take that picture into an environment where you can pan and scan 360 degrees, zoom and pan around, and then you can take that image and create a virtual set. What? That you can then pan and zoom in 360 degrees all around. What? And actually, we're gonna take a look at it right now, Leo. So here's Kiki on the steps of our city hall, and what I wanna do is I wanna cruise over, and wow. uh, I think we've got Leo Laporte. What? Hey, Kiki, how San are you? As well. Wait a minute, she's over there. <laughs> <laughs> but I want you to see this because it's, yes. tr it's truly amazing what you can do here where I'm going to open up the actual preview this panel. Is, this is not, this is a static panorama at, that you shot. Look at this. What 360 degree, you can see the sky, you can see the I'm ground. I'm standing here in front of City Hall where a crisis is about to occur. Wow, that's right. That's amazing. Isn't it? Now, you can do this a couple of different ways. You can also bring in a matte sequence. So let me show you that. We're going to come down here. And in this one, we've got you behind the podium over there. Who's and we've this actually guy? just masked it out with another image hey. in the front. Hey, buddy. So this was all done. <laughs> working here. Digital cameras. You could do it with your smartphone, literally, to make these images. <laughs> <laughs> now, as an extra treat, Rio, really, well, wait a minute. You could take this with like a panorama shot on the smartphone and yep. use that. Yes. Import it in and, and just that's it. And once you get the panoramic picture, creating the set is about one minute. Wow. About one minute. They do that in the TriCaster? Yes. Wow. Now, let me show you this because I went out online and I did a search for the Twit Brick House and was there a panorama? available? And there just happened to be one. No, Kiki, what are so you now, doing here? <laughs> Here we are, she's, in your studio. She's right here. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm running this board here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and we can do this from that anywhere. She's never been here. I just want to point that out. 
Wow. So that's our new holographic virtual set technology. And <laughs> using those together really gives you a look that you're not going to get anywhere else. That blows me away. It's fun stuff. <laughs> I can't believe it. So that's just, you just take a 3D pano. I just went to a, Google a and I, I said, images, Twit Brick House. It came up, I grabbed it, and with under 30 seconds, I made that set. Now, okay, I don't even understand how this works. It's just magic. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even get that. <laughs> Kiki's making fun of me. Stop that. <laughs> so that is wild. That is really wild. That's cool. Cool. Yeah. So, Do you want me to come back? Or yeah, come I just on stay back here? over. Because I'm in charge now. I'm running the board. All right. Okay, watch <laughs> this. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is amazing. It's really great stuff. Think of the blackmail opportunity. I know. <laughs> but and the fact that you're doing that live in real time is just mind-boggling. But actually, you know, it's really valuable because re virtual sets are really cool, except they're really hard to make. Right. I mean, they cost... Right. Millions to make. Right. And this, the, our goal here was to solve that problem. Well, and also and these look real. They don't look like virtual sets. It looked like I was actually at City Hall. It looked yeah. like I was actually standing there. And there's a certain value to starting with a photograph and, and making that the virtual set. It's just yeah. incredible. I'll know? tell you something else. I, you know, when, when, I, when we first implemented this and we started playing with it, somehow the moment you start playing with them, it just feels so much more real than you yeah. would possibly imagine. Yeah. Somehow it just, it's got this real feel to it that, you know, Rendered Vermeer would have loved this, Tim. <laughs> this is it's similar in some ways, right? I mean, you're really doing amazing optical uh, stuff. That's really incredible. I love the speed at which you can create it. So it's you would amazing. import a JPEG from a camera phone, mm -hmm. and in a minute, mm -hmm. what kind of tweaking is involved? To Just setting up where you want your talent to be. So you've got your A talent, your B talent. So and you're the setting up a mask is, around. The great thing is... You're just placing them in there. Once you get in here, I can then reposition, right. scale, you saw do whatever that. They I were want. Moving me so around and... You're just saying basically I want them over there and them over there and them over there, and then you can go in and make whatever changes wow. live once you wow. get into the live environment. The, the real, uh, we don't use 3D sets because, uh, I mean, uh, the fake ones because we don't want to look like we're in a sci fi environment. We want to make it more realistic, more high touch. But you, when you use a photo, it looks like you're there. It does. That's really, that's great. I love that. It does. We'll never have to go to another Apple event again. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> We're not allowed. So. We're getting a little okay. hit on the uh, okay. microphone there. Yeah. All right. So the next thing I want to talk about are media players. And the TriCaster has a variety of media players, DDRs for playing video clips, still title players, things like that. Well, this line, the new professional line of TriCasters has added a whole new host of media players in the form of buffers. So just to explain to folks, we use these all the time. When we want to show a, a video, for instance, we have it in the... Uh, the DDR, which is basically a virtual tape player. Like a and VCR? Could, it's like a VCR. We could play it back. There's still stores which allow us to bring up still images. Um, so how has this changed? Well, now we've got these buffers down here, and they allow you to load video clips into them. Okay. So, and any time that you use one of those buffers, as a matter of fact, the desk that she's got underneath her in this virtual shot is a anim buffer that's running. It's not a video clip that's not taking up any of the DDRs or any of that. It's an animated buffer that's running. I actually asked one of your guys if they could help me out with a little oh, animated look, there logo. You go. There's the logo. And I made that two minutes before the show started. Wow. So wow. literally it's a, a image sequence of pings. You bring it in and you can turn out these animated buffers, put them into your buffer area down there. The great thing about them is that each buffer has a palette like the transitions in the TriCaster, so you can instantly change out what's I in that, that buffer. I love that. So you've got 10 of them in the 860 and the 8000. That's literally like 90 animated frame buffers that you have at your fingertips. And Typically it, used for lower thirds or virtual sets, any, I guess anything. Anything huh? that, where you need a motion graphic. It doesn't right. really matter. Right. Uh, We're going to start using that. Use I love for. that. We want to get motion graphics in our lower thirds. That's great. Yep. And I think that I have... Let me me look for just a rotating twit bug is like a, uh, a big step up for us i'm going to come over here and say i'm going to go to buffer number three and i can come down here and we are not the most challenging of your customers because we you know we, our production is fairly sim simple the only thing that's challenging is we use it non-stop the tricaster never rests it's always on and it's i think so here you've got kind, it's yeah. good for it it is yeah here you've got a full screen overlay but i can take it down change the preset and not have to change the source to the DSK, there is a little bit of loading time. Once it's loaded, it's ready to come up again. And again, I'm not using a DDR to do this. This is all done right inside the animated frame buffers themselves. So when the zombie apocalypse does happen, we are ready for it.
<laughs> zombie zombie alert. alert. So we need that one, I think. <laughs> but literally, like adding all of those animated buffers or all of those media players in there, and you've and you got get some, nine of them. And you've got some for stills. You've got nine per. Now, in the 460 and the 410, you're going to have five animated buffers. The 860 and the 8000, you'll have ten. But they also have still buffers as well. So if you want to use still images, you have individual buffers for stills wow. as well. Wow. Um, and all of them have this palette of nine. So it's literally like this. Nine transitions times however many buffers. Nine you have. presets. Presets, yeah. Per buffer, wow. right? Really, really great stuff. And they can have titles in them. They can have graphics in right. them. They, you can do pretty much everything with them. Wow. So you, basically, you get movement, you get motion, you get titles, just unlimited, any way you want. Wow. And As that, the that's demo guy. As a demo guy for new tech, it's always been difficult to get a lot of inputs when I'm doing demos. Right. Now, I can actually run green screen from an animated frame buffer and not even have to have a green screen there. And I can do the demos of the virtual oh, sets cool. without having any that's live great. camera or anything wow. coming in. That's so great, it's yeah. very, very flexible and powerful stuff. So let's move along here. We also have some extensive control. We've talked about a lot of new features, but the control of these features is what I love. Now, we do have macros we talked about earlier, and macros allow you to do some really interesting things. I'm going to switch over to this, and I'm going to zoom in on Kiki here. And I think I have this set up right where... Traditionally uh, very difficult to do because you're, you're moving, the, the talent's moving in one way and the set's moving another <laughs> way. To get, the, to get that to look like they're together is very tough, very tough to do. So let me just see here. I think that's going to work. So I have a macro set up here, and if I hit two, it's going to push to the side, and that's it's going to bring that down. Actually, I can change the speed of that push so it doesn't hit her in the head like that. <laughs> uh, let's do this, and now we can take it back out again. And so macros allow you to do things that are five, six, seven processes at one time, or right. you can uh, animate a sequence of your show and have it run itself, whatever you want to do. Uh, traditionally, we've been able to run those macros either from the interface, map them to a keyboard, map them to the control Very surface. useful for me because I'm sitting doing the whole thing by myself, doing a show at the same time. The ability to pull, push, push out, move over, have an over-the-shoulder <laughs> graphic without me doing anything is phenomenal. And also, you know, we don't use camera operators normally. Sorry, Greg. Um, so that looks like you've got a camera operator making a move. It you've absolutely does. You've got a graphic coming in. It's incredible. You can, you've got eight of those different positions, and you can position all of those That's as well. That's really great. Yeah. Now, in order to run the macros, uh, or, or in order to control the TriCaster, we've added several new things. And one of them is MIDI support. So we now have full MIDI support for all of the functions of the TriCast. Oh. <laughs> so what I have here Where is... Where did you get that? <laughs> a Novation that's, launch pad. That's awesome, yeah. And this was... I bought it at a music store. Yeah, DJ's normally you use it with them. Ableton Live. You see, you know, Dead Mouse will use one of these <laughs> to, to fire off his tracks. DJs use them all the time. Well, right now, I can use it to switch my TriCaster. You can have presets built into these... Uh, Pads. I can switch my TriCaster around. I've got. I can bring up whatever I want on That's Preview awesome. down here. I've got my DSKs available if I want to wow. bring those up. And wow. those macros that we were talking about. Let's go back here. I can also bring in Basically, your lower third. Basically, a monkey could operate this. <laughs> and of course, this has pages and banks. I do require a banana. Nope. No, com no comment on you, Don, but I'm just saying me. I'm, that's me I'm talking about. That is very, very cool. Let's it see. is really, really yeah. amazing and uh, so much functionality here. Now, this is nice and it is wired. It's just USB. You plug right. it in and it goes. So right. There's actually an application with the TriCaster to decide what color all the buttons are going to be. Wow. So you can kind of decide. Do I need to use the launch pad? Can I? There no, are, no, there, no, no, no. Any mini any device. Mi any mini, mini device. device. Wow. Doesn't matter. That is and to really prove that. Great. To prove that... You brought a keyboard. I brought an iPad. Oh! Now, there are MIDI applications right. out there for the oh. iPad. And I have one on here yeah. called Touch OSC. Yep. And you can see that we have a beautiful we interface. So, and the nice thing about this, because it's soft, you can label it. You can know exactly what you're going to get. So, right. hit, hit the auto... Or, wait a minute. Let me give you something. Hit auto? Hit auto. Okay. Now, the, I'm the monkey. Let's see if I can do it. Did it work? Is it talking? It, hold on a second. We got we got a pair of... <laughs> There it goes. There Whoa! <laughs> so you've got take, auto, DSKs, all the stuff you want. John, forget the keyboard in my office. I just want an iPad. We're just going to do this. Everything I would need to do literally could fit on this one screen and make it a lot easier for me. I now, guess. now, check it out. You also have all your media players, all your social media, and we also have more control over the cameras. We have integrated wow, PTZ camera control, and I have actually mapped it. Is that what that thing is on the desk there? <laughs> and we're now controlling our PTZ camera. That's really neat. From the iPad That's using really our neat. MIDI integration. Wow, that is amazing. 
So, and this was all made internally by one of our uh, wow. sales engineers at New Tech, and it took him a couple days to figure it out, and then. But he, he used a, an existing app that no. allowed you to program the buttons. He was able to go on the PC, make the interface, That's incredible. import it into the iPad, and then we just create the macros and map them to those buttons. That is really So sweet. if you want to make the custom Leo layout, right. you can do that. Right. Be exactly what you need. Right. You can trigger. There wouldn't be a button I could push that would do the wrong thing. Uh, I could. <laughs> <laughs> they can't guarantee that, folks. <laughs> I have an amazing ability. Wow, that's really cool. And that's where really I see cool. this, you know, I think PTZ would be nice, but this section right here, the social media section. Well, you should have seen section. me running the PTZ. What is the social media section? Well, <laughs> the TriCaster 8000 introduced social media publishing, where you can publish right. content from your show, stills or video. During the show? During the show, while it's recording. They can say, oh, that was hysterical. Leo spilled uh, coffee into his laptop. <laughs> Quick, get that up on YouTube, and, and literally they could do this from a push, push button. So this allows a second operator to be in charge of social oh, media. Oh, interesting. So, you know, usually the TD might be too busy trying to yeah, switch yeah, the show. Yeah, yeah, he's got other stuff to do. Here's another control surface for you to do all your social media. Here's another control wow, surface to control really anything in the TriCaster. So this is, while this is operating or a keyboard is operating, I still have this kind of interface into the TriCaster, and it's able to multitask <laughs> in That's effect. That's correct. Wow. And that social media publishing now is through the entire professional line, the 410, the 460, the That's 860, a, that, and the 8000. That is actually really important these days because you really do want to get those clips up right away. You really want to publish them out and while they're happening if you can. Traditional broadcasters have not really figured out how to integrate no. that into their workflow, yeah. and New Tech has integrated Glenn, it directly. this is your new, welcome to your new interface, Glenn. <laughs> Glenn's our social media guy. He'll be pushing these buttons. <laughs> That's very cool. That's really neat. Yeah. Yeah. So this is actually my cheat sheet, so I need it. If, oh yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you're just tuning in, we're getting a little demonstration of some new TriCasters. There's a new line of sub-$10,000 TriCasters. That's right. really uh, good news. TriCasters is always really focused not just on best technology, but on making it affordable for people oh, like me. Absolutely. Who don't have all the money in the world? I mean, you start at what two thousand dollars and go on up from there. Um, we we start at five thousand dollars. Five thousand. And, and go on I'm up sorry, from I just there. made it a little cheaper. <laughs> we'll get you a special <laughs> deal. Five thousand and go on up. The four sixty, the four sixty one. We're also looking at new software on the uh, eight thousand Don Balance. Who, if just, you've ever just, if you've ever gone to CES, you've seen him do his <laughs> great great demos. Just put in your promo code. That's Leo. Yeah, Leo. Leo, yeah. take half the cost. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. So um, the streaming and publishing, again, one of the things that we've brought down the line. And the other thing I want to talk about is the New Tech Developer Network. Okay. Now there's, there's a new group of companies uh, that we're calling the New Tech Developer Network that are using the SDKs that are available. And there are SDKs available for all the TriCasters for writing your own applications for oh, whatever cool. you want to do. And we have a lot of different companies, including Chiron, coming up with the Chiron really? IP. Wow. Um, Compix is now coming into the fray, but lots of different stuff. I, I'm just picking the ones off the top of my head, but control surfaces, media management, asset management, streaming enhancements, even uh, Ustream has created a new plugin, integrated into the TriCaster oh, streaming panel, that's and huge. makes it very easy to use your Ustream account and get up and running right that's away. That's really so fantastic, yeah. All of these new enhancements all across the entire line. Wow, this is great. Now, this rack mountable, that's the high end, that's the 8,000. Th this is this this is the size of the 410 and the 460. Wow, actually, this says 460-ish. Um, yes. Yeah. Look on the front, wow, that's so great. So the, you know, it's just two RU, you, I mean, it's it's completely portable. You can put it in any rack. Um, Fantastic, and, and I love this. We've been re we've been able to do so much using the uh, control surface. In fact, we've got the TriCaster, people may not know this, in the basement. Uh, we have it in a rack, well, Normally, <laughs> I know it's over there now, but normally we have that in the basement where it's air conditioned and cool and it's out of the way. And, and this is just a USB interface that goes through the floor. We have a hole in the floor under our, our TD. And, uh, and that really gives us some incredible flexibility. And at the same time as this is working out here, I use a keyboard and a mouse, just kind of a traditional PC keyboard and a mouse in my office to do the same thing. But I'm going to start using an iPad. I think that's really neat. Anything else you want one, to show us? One last thing I'll talk about. We do have a variety of new audio enhancements as well. The back of the TriCaster uh, traditionally had four channels right. and then four channels of auxiliary. Right. Those have been broken out into four stereo pairs, discrete stereo pairs. And we now have routing built right in where you can route any input to any of those outputs. 
So this makes it very easy to do secondary audio programming for regional broadcast, things along those lines. You just have a lot more control over where the audio goes and how you're getting it out. And we still have, of course, audio follow video. We've actually added audio delay in here, which has been something customers have That's been asking That's nice. We for. can actually use that, yeah. yeah. So a lot of new enhancements to the audio as well. And true panning on all of these dis four discrete channels that are coming That's out awesome. now. That's um, great. So the just a true stereo effect. Just scratching the surface on the enhancements in the whole wow. layer. Very exciting. I mean, we've not even gone through, I mean, there's so much more in here. There's just, you know, every, you know, so when we came out, out with the 8000, you know, what I, I remember going into a meeting and saying to my engineers, hey, we need, when we're designing the 8000, it needs to be game over. We need to design the ultimate switcher that does pretty much everything. Everything, yeah. right. And that was our goal. I think you succeeded. And I mean, yeah, I we, we did a lot, but you know. Well, every time you do that, then you have to work out Man, what's next. What's next? How else do we do this again? How do we improve on it? And yeah. so, you know, coming up with, you know, this product, I mean, that was our problem. We came up with the 8,000. How on earth are we going to do this across right. the whole right. line and do it again and make it an even bigger step? And I'm really, gosh, I mean, I, 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 it's very bold of me to say, but I think we're, this is the biggest jump we've ever made. Well, and I love it that it's a software upgrade. For a lot of people like us, this is going to be an a, yes. a easy way to get a whole batch of new functionality. Yes. So, you know, new tech, we've always, one of the key things we've always done is we always try to, you know, we've been doing this for 25 years now. We always try to, you know, we, we are really loyal to our customers. We really want them to be able to move up right. the line. Right. And, you know, to the greatest degree with that possible, we're always, that, you know, that's one of the core things we believe in. We want to make sure that people can move up. And that's one of the things we're going to do here. Um, it, you know, there are some models, I mean, we've got, a lot of legacy here. We got you know ten, ten years worth of tricasters alone, and so exactly which models can be upgraded and which can't is really a question. Right. You know, people should right. go to the new tech site, go to the new right. tech reseller to work that out. But but ultimately, yes, um, you know, a lot of these features will be available to people for you know for really very very affordable prices. That's very, very exciting. Affordable. Well, Donna, thank you. As well, always, you've gone way over my head, but I know there are people watching. In fact, there's somebody in the chat room says, my brain's hurting. I just thought of about 15 new things. <laughs> I, a whole business could have run around this. And that's, I, people are using this in all kinds of ways. I know churches use it. Uh, sports teams use yeah. it for secondary broadcasts. Especially with school sports. Schools, yeah. sports. Yeah. It's great for that, right? Yeah, I mean, we got we donated our old TriCaster to the high to my the high school. Oh, really? That's really yeah, cool. and they're doing they've got four camera shoots. They're doing productions there, and it's great because they get a chance to use modern technology and really learn what the state of the art is in video production. It's it's a wonderful thing for them. One of the coolest things I think about about my job at New Tech is hearing everything people's doing. Yeah, with us. I mean, it's it, you know, you just hear things. You know, we, we we always try to come up with cool things, and you know, we really try to strive to make the product innovative. Have you know. To take problems that real people face, like yeah. building sets and so on, and try to work out how to do it in some way that's even you know further outside the box and still achieves everything they do. But even given that, you know, we just hear all these stories about people using our stuff in ways that we had never that's anticipated. Really cool. yeah, so that's you know one of the, the the best parts of what we do. Tim, yeah. can you believe all of this from? It's great living in the future. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's astounding what this what this equipment can do. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it used to take a truck and... Yeah, it well, that's right. This is basically a sat truck yep. in, uh, in, a, in a box uh, that you can get put, take on the plane with you, put in the overhead compartment. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> one, one thing that really blew me away, you were talking about, it, you, maybe it's over your head or you can't use it. I went out to Cibolo Creek Elementary School the other day uh, with Michael Cornett, and we are starting a program with these guys to see if oh, it's something man. that we can take uh, larger. But we took a 40 out to them, just a TriCaster 40. Wow. They had no video experience whatsoever, I mean, none. And I went out to train them, and I had about three hours. So oh I'm taking God. you from zero to, <laughs> to 60 in three hours. And I trained a few people, and their goal was to get a morning announcement show on in a week oh, from that neat. point of time. And when I left Leo, I was like, they don't have a shot. They're, wow. The sixth there's, graders there's are no doing way. it. They did it. Wow. And it's been on every day since so since cool. school started. And the kids are running it. And wow. it's absolutely, it blew me away. So if you can't really figure nice. it out, get it in a sixth grader. That's, what yeah. I, that's my problem. Yeah, exactly. I need a sixth grader. So <laughs> easy a fifth grader can uh, can use it. Well, and it's also really about democratizing uh, video production, which is probably, you know, video is probably the most powerful way of communicating ideas, uh, of, of reaching people. We of, believe our eyes. Yeah. yeah. And so the ability to do this in, a, in an affordable way uh, and, and to do something that is as powerful and as sophisticated as this in an affordable way, it's what you're, it's really a, kind of the out, outgrowth of the PC revolution itself, of the digital revolution, but also of great minds. Uh, like yours, Tim, and, and uh, I am so thrilled in yours, Andrew. I'm really glad we could uh, show this off. We live on TriCaster, so it's always uh, exciting for us to see what's new uh, from New Tech.
Thank you for being here, Don. Thank you so much, Don thank Ballas. You, thank you for having us. Uh, trainer extraordinaire. I hope you get the chance to see have him in your elementary school. Uh, Andrew Cross, <laughs> CTO at uh, New Tech, and of course Tim. It was a real Pleasure. honor and uh, privilege to get to talk to you and meet you. And if, if you didn't see the triangulation we did with Tim, please do and go see Tim's Vermeer when it comes uh, comes to uh, a movie theater near you. I'm Leo Laporte. Thanks for joining us for this Twitch special. Newtek.com for more information about all these products. Uh, and I have a feeling, when are we getting our upgrade? Any Anytime soon. You're going to start seeing me wander <laughs> around City Hall. Any, wait a minute, is that it? What is that? Yep, that's your what eight, is that? That's your 8,000. What? <laughs> All right, rock and roll. Thank you, guys. And thanks, Philip, for uh, bringing us uh, everybody here. We really love having you uh, part of our family. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time on Twit Special. Can I show you one more thing, Leo? Yeah, hotspots. Can I get you, in the, spots. Can I get you in the, spots. Get you over there in the green screen, and we'll this show you. You know, we never use the virtual. Well, we rarely we use the virtual yeah. sets, mm -hmm. but I think that uh, these look so much easier, and I'm really interested. Sound like nice the fakey uh, nice sci-fi looking sets, You're but nice to be able to use real You're imagery nice in the three D is uh, really nice fascinating. Puppy. Okay, here so I am. So I, um, we have a feature called hotspots, and what a hotspot is. <laughs> It's an area of the frame, mm -hmm. and it needs to be keyed, so it does work on Alpha Channel, but you can define an area on the screen, and then you can attach a macro to it. Okay. And then if you pass your hand through that area of the screen, it'll trigger the macro. You're kidding. So I can sit here so, and so what just I want, make stuff that's happen? It. That, that's exactly what I want you to do, but okay. I'm going to turn it on first. Where's my hotspot? Whoa! Now, uh, up your, <laughs> your right hand, yeah. up top, there. Now, pass your hand through it. Pat, like wave through it. What? What? Uh, <laughs> so maybe you can run it, Leo. <laughs> hey, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. Now, does it have to be a garbage mask there, or can it just be a... That's the edge of the shot. That's the edge of the frame. So yeah. that's not anything. If I stand over here, right? If we had, got it. If we had a bigger green screen, we wouldn't have that problem. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Twit logo. Uh. <laughs> and you can have multiple different spots. Yeah. There's up to eight of them. What? So you. So that's you could. Hysterical. You could have the on-camera talent switching, bringing up graphics. You know, think about the weather broadcast. The weather guys right. could be bringing in well, all the stuff that they for, want. Right? It's like a weather guy going, and here you'll see the Twit logo. <laughs> and here's your weather broadcast <laughs> with all animated buffers as your graphics. <laughs> wow! You're kidding, really? That's all animated wow. buffers with all the clouds and all that sort of That's stuff. Neat. So, very cool. It's you know, it's almost in a way having such a vocab, such a huge vocabulary is daunting. It's almost too powerful, you know? Well, we try and minimize it all to TLAs. That's three-letter three acronyms. Yes, of course. You're very good at TLAs. Put the DSK and the DDR and put in the ME and send it out an FLV stream. <laughs> that, is, that is really a neat, uh, that is really neat. Come on now. Come on. Uh <laughs>